Hello there! Come on in! My name is Tolonai Trukazieva and I welcome you to today's discussion. Did you grab your cup of tea? Excellent! Because we are starting our Teachers of English Exchange Club. It's time to enhance our teaching skills. During our meeting we will learn how to effectively use new innovative national textbook for the 8th grade written by Olga Baluta and Chinara Abdyshova. We all know that being able to listen to others is vitally important in the communication process. This means not only listening with your ears, but also being able to understand what other people are saying. You can also use gestures, eye contact and body language to help people listen better. Unfortunately, the reality is that worldwide not many teachers teach listening. If we actively teach listening skills, our students will have the ability to acquire knowledge and skills in a range of contexts, not only in learning English. So, for today's discussion, I have prepared a short listening demonstration lesson. But before our lesson, I'd like you to pay attention to the three different stages of a listening lesson. Okay, ready? Let's go! Hello students, welcome to our class. Today we'll talk about movies. Stand up and make two lines facing each other. I will read a question and you will talk to your classmate and answer the question. When you're done, first line, move one person to the left and switch your partner. Your questions are, do you prefer watching films or reading books? Why? Do you like watching films at home or at the cinema? Why? What kind of films do you like watching? Why? Who is your favorite actor or actress? Why? Okay, now tell me if you learned something new about your classmates. Of course you did! Okay, great! That was an interesting discussion. Now open your books to page 66 and look at exercise 2. Cover the next page with a piece of paper. Here you have four posters of films. Guess what are the films about? For example, let's start with the first one. The name of the film is I am Sam. What do you think it is about? Yes, we see a man and a girl and it looks like they're a happy family. And I wonder what's going to happen. It seems to be very emotional and we might even cry. Now you work with your classmate and guess what are the other films about? Okay. The second film is called Queen of Katwe. It looks like it's an inspirational film about a woman from Africa. It also seems to relate to chess because we can see some chess figures at the bottom. What do you think it is about? I think the movie is about motivation to learn and change your life. The third film is about music. It's possibly about school children who are challenged and inspired by their teacher. I am sure this movie will be exciting for you. The fourth film is possibly a fantasy film, a war between different forces and mysterious creatures. I think there will be many beautiful scenes of nature and unpredictable challenges. Well, it was great to learn about your predictions. Lots of interesting ideas. Let's look at some words here now. First, it's a brief summary of a book or a film. Do you know what it is? Yes, it's a synopsis. Is a synopsis a full description of the film? No, it's a brief description. Is a synopsis objective? No, synopsis is often subjective because the writer can write his or her personal opinion. 
Does a synopsis name every idea from the book or film? No, there is no rule about with this uh, a synopsis. Okay, listen. Synopsis. Repeat after me. Synopsis. How do you spell it? Yes, it's S-Y-N-O-P-S-I-S. -S. Where's the stress? Listen. Synopsis. Yes, it's on the second syllable. What part of speech is it? It is a noun. Is it plural or singular? It's singular. The plural form of synopsis is synopsis. Great! The next word is an adjective describing something having a high status. Do you know what it is? It's prestigious. For example, is Harvard University a prestigious university? Yes. Is the Oscar award a prestigious award? Yes. Listen, prestigious. Repeat after me, prestigious. Okay, how do you spell it? Yes, it's P-R-E-S-T-I-G-O-U-S. Where is the stress? Prestigious. It's on the first syllable. What part of speech is it? Yes, it's an adjective. Great. Take a look at this picture now. Do you know what this place is called? Yes, it's a slum. Are there good living conditions in slums? No, there are no toilets or showers inside. Are people living in slums rich? No, slums are located in poor areas of a city. Listen, slum. Repeat after me, slum. Okay, how do you spell it? It's S-L-U-M. Okay, what part of speech is it? It's a noun. Is it plural or singular? Yes, it's singular. The plural form is slums. Great. Um, so uh, for our next word, let's imagine a boy named Tom. He is six years old and his parents died in a car crash last month. He has no other relatives. Social services put him in a new family who will take care of him, but they are not his real parents. What is this family called? Yes, it's called a foster family. Okay, listen, foster family, foster family. Repeat after me, foster family. How do you spell it? Yes, it's F-O-S-T-E-R-F-A-M-I-L-Y. Where's the stress? Foster family. What part of speech is it? Yes, it's a noun. Okay, now take your notebooks and write film one, film two, film three, and film four. You will listen to the film synopses and, and match them with the names of films in the exercise two. Okay, let's listen. Unit 4B. Page 67, Exercises 3 and 4. Film 1. This is a fantasy adventure film. It is set in an imaginary land called Middle-earth. Frodo Baggins receives a magic ring of invisibility from his uncle Bilbo. Frodo learns that the ring has the power to control the entire world. The Dark Lord Sauron is looking for the ring to rule all of Middle-earth. A group of friends begins their exhausting journey to destroy the ring by throwing it into the volcano, Mount Doom. Film 2. This is a hilarious comedy film starring Jack Black. Black plays a rock guitarist Dewey Finn, who is kicked out of his rock band. He becomes a teacher at a prestigious school. When he learns that his student has musical talent, Dewey forms a band with them in order to win a competition called Battle of the Bands. Film 3. This is a fascinating biographical drama film based on a true story. 
It's about Fiona Mutesi, a girl living in Katwe, a slum of Uganda. She lives with her three siblings and mother who sells corn on the street. The family never has enough money. Her life changed when she meets Robert Katende, who teaches children to play chess at the local center. Fiona learns to play chess and becomes a woman candidate master after her victories at World Chess Olympiads. Film 4 This is a fabulous drama film starring Sean Penn as a man with an intellectual disability. He's the single father of seven-year-old Lucy, whom he loves more than anyone else. And she loves him. The Department of Children and Family Services take Lucy away from Sam and try to place her with a foster mom, Randy Carpenter. A lawyer named Rita promises to help Sam. Lucy continually runs away from the foster family. Finally, Randy tells Sam that she will tell the judge that Sam is the better parent for Lucy. Okay, great. Now please compare your answers with your classmate. Great, let's check them together. Film 1 is The Lord of the Rings. Film 2 is The School of Rock. Film 3 is The Queen of Katwe. And film 4 is I Am Sam. Great, you did a good job. Now you will listen to the audio one more time. This time you will listen to the synopsis again and answer the questions about each film. The questions are, what genre is it? Uh, for example, you can say it's a science fiction, comedy, fantasy, drama, horror or biographical film. What is it about? And is it interesting film to watch? Why or why not? You can jot down some notes as you listen. Great, let's check our answers. Film 1 is a fantasy adventure film. It's about imaginary land where a boy receives a magic ring with the powers to control the entire world. This boy, Frodo, and his friends need to destroy the ring and make peace in the world. Film 2 is a comedy. It is about a guitarist who is kicked out of his rock band. He becomes a teacher in school and creates a music band with his talented students. Film 3 is a biographical drama based on a true story. It's about a woman living in slums who learns how to play chess and becomes a master at World Chess Olympiads. Film 4 is a drama about a father and a daughter. They love each other, but the father has an intellectual disability and cannot take care of his daughter. Social services put his daughter in a foster family, but she keeps running away. Finally, they're allowed to be together. Now that we have discussed all four movies, answer these two questions and tell your partner. Which of these four movies would you like to watch? If someone made a movie about your life, what kind of movie would it be? Well, thank you for a wonderful discussion. That's it for today. See you next time. Bye-bye. Welcome back, dear teachers. Let's see what kind of notes you've made and what else you might want to add to complete your observation. We can divide this lesson into three stages before listening, during listening, and post listening. Please take a minute to think about what steps were done in each of these stages. Let's start with before listening stage. Do you remember how I started the lesson? Yes, our lesson started with an activity where students talked to each other and answered four questions about films. What do you think was the purpose of doing this activity? Right, it was done to prepare our students for listening and activate their background knowledge. Background knowledge is an essential component in learning because it helps us make sense of new ideas and experiences. Then students worked in pairs, looked at pictures and made predictions about what these films could be about. 
prediction is an activity where learners carry out before reading or listening to a text, where they predict what they are going to hear or read. This gives them a reason to listen as they confirm or reject their predictions. This also helps to raise students' interest. And finally, I pre-taught some useful vocabulary using the meaning form pronunciation framework to prepare students for the listening. Let's move to the next stage, during listening. How many times did we listen to the audio recording? Yes, two times. Did the students have a specific task every time they listened to the recording? Yes, the first time they had to match synopsis with films. The purpose of the first listening was to understand the gist. Second time, they had to answer the questions about each film. And this time, they had to understand specific details for each film. Remember, students must have a purpose for listening. Having an explicit purpose in mind will help them to know where to focus. If they know the purpose in advance, they will accomplish the task more effectively. Great! And what happened in the post-listening stage? Here, the students had a chance to discuss movies and make a decision based on the listening comprehension. It allows students to develop other skills, in this case, speaking. Students talked about what movie they would like to watch. The purpose of this question was to personalize the task. Personalization happens when activities allow students uh, to use language to express their own ideas, feelings, preferences, and opinions. Personalization is an important part of communicative approach since it involves true communication as learners communicate real information about themselves. So, let's sum up what we talked about today. A listening lesson has three stages. Before listening, during listening, and post listening. Each stage serves a purpose to develop listening skills and allows students to practice additional skills or grammar. Here are some tips for you. Before listening, prepare your learners by introducing the topic and finding out what they already know about it. A good way to do this is to have a brainstorming session, a discussion, some questions related to the topic. Then provide any necessary background information and new vocabulary they will need for the listening activity. During listening, be specific about what students need to listen for. They can listen for selective details or general content. If they are not marking answers or otherwise responding whilst listening, tell them ahead of time what will be required afterward. Post-listening. Finish with an activity to extend the topic and help students remember new vocabulary. This could be a discussion group, writing task, or a game. Well, I hope this activity will encourage you to teach listening more frequently. Thank you, and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.